morning everybody back down the beach again with puppy and uh, I've had time to reflect on all of your lovely comments regarding what you want to see on the channel I've kind of concluded that I'm gonna have to break it down um, there's a bit of crossover here and there but one of the ones that I really thought was quite good was a uh, uh, the question of tyres. Indeed, that is a big question for anybody that goes rallying or racing, but I think with rallying tyre choices, uh, it's really quite a dynamic one. You can spend a lot, you can spend a little. What tyres do I use? When do I use them? What compounds should I be on? How do I keep wear down? And it's certainly something that I've given a lot of consideration to over the years. So in this video, I'm going to cover my approach. The first thing is what make of tyre are you going to use? Well, of course, that is going to be a dependent on your budget. Can you afford to put brand new Michelins on every time you go rallying? Mm, if you can, you're in the minority of people. But the next question is, if you can't afford the Michelin, what are you going to use? So it's at this point, there's a choice. Do you get some part warns? I've won a rally on part one tyres and Abingdon last week. Um, I was on I was on part one tyres all day. Same set of four medium compound tyres. The part one to start with did 65 stage miles. Don't be put off by part one tyres. There's a lot of bargains out there. You can phone someone up like Steve Harkness or John Davies and, you know, get a bundle of tyres um, pretty cheap. So if you're not buying a part one tyre and you want to get new stuff, then uh, um, I just found out Mr. Tire Motorsport. I've got a relationship with them. Um, they're easy to deal with. They've got loads of stuff on the shelf, all different makes. And you know, everything goes out basically that day and the carriage cost isn't that expensive. So you might buy, um, I don't know, say a middle of the road 18 inch tire for about 250 quid, something like that. You might be lucky, they might have a bit of old stock which will come in quite a bit cheaper. You know, you might pay as little as say, I don't know, 130, 40 quid. If there's some old stock kicking around and then obviously all the way up to the premium Michelins which as we know are jolly expensive at about 350 quid, something like that. But whichever way you're looking at it, you should really be looking to um, put the best tyres you possibly can on your car for the money. So let's have a little chat about compounds then. Compounds really come in the following. So basically you've got wets. And your wets are for when there's a lot of standing water around um, and spray and so on and so forth. And you need to move that water from underneath the tyre. And every other occasion you're going to be on a cut slick of some form. So that's probably going to be... Uh, either a, a super soft, a soft, a medium or a hard. And there's a, quite a lot of variation between those sort of compounds. But if you regard those as your core compounds, most of the things that are on offer are going to basically fall pretty much within that sort of range. So let's assume you're getting ready to go to a rally and it's the depths of winter. So, OK, we're off to do the brown hatch stages. Let's just take that for an example. It's cold, it's wet and the temperature is not going to get up much all day. So what are you going to take with you? It's a pretty easy choice. You're gonna take some wets, you're gonna take some super softs, and you're gonna take some softs. Me, personally, I like to run with 18 wheels. So what I'll do is I'll run six, six, and six. And that should be enough to get you through most single venue rallies. If you have a puncture, or a double puncture, you've still got four wheels on the car. Running with five, five, and five is too risky. And if you get excessive wear for any reason, then you've got nowhere to go. Where it gets a little bit more tricky is when you come to a spring rally. So, I mean, that could be anything because one minute you could be in winter conditions and the next minute you could be in bacon or summer conditions. So how do you cater for that? Well, you, at that point, you do have to take a bit more of a gamble and you've got to keep more of an eye on the weather. So that would be one of my tips. Don't leave yourself short on selection because you haven't got enough wheels. Get enough wheels and basically get enough tyres to do the job you need to do. Of course, in all of this, you've got to consider tyre wear. So, you know, a lot of people will find perhaps they go onto a softer compound and they wreck their tyres. Well, then, then you need to modify your driving style because if you're wrecking tyres, uh, and it's usually the fronts, it's because you aren't driving smoothly enough. And smooth is fast. Being smooth and looking after your tyres is, is a good strategy. So, you know, if you're allowing the car to rotate in sort of first and second gear corners and being patient and not getting on the power straight away in a four-wheel drive car, that will reap your rewards. Otherwise, invariably what happens is you start to work the front tyres too hard because you get into the power too early, the car hasn't fully rotated in the corner and it'll want to push on and it'll start scrubbing those front tyres out. Temperatures rise, pressures rise, and as a consequence it gets exponentially worse and worse. So generally speaking, I tend to urge on the side of caution. I will probably go for a slightly softer compound rather than gamble on perhaps trying a harder compound because it gives you a margin of safety. If the soft compound isn't 
isn't the ideal compound to be on, unless it goes completely off because like you've really got it wrong, you might get a little bit more wear here and there, but you're operating with a margin of safety. If you go for too hard a compound and the tire won't come in properly and work properly, then of course, you know, that can give you a, a sort of unpredictable handling on the car because you just can't really feel the grip. If you are finding that you can't find the perfect compound and you are a little bit soft on the compound and you're finding that you are starting to scrub the tires a bit, um, then really just getting back into service and rotating the tires front to back, which is exactly what I did at Abingdon, because frankly I could have done with being on a hard tire, but I wasn't, I was on a medium. So we just rotated the, the tires every single time in service from front to back, and I managed to make a set of part-worn medium compound tires last all day. So you can dramatically improve the lifespan of your tires by following those sorts of techniques. Being kind to tires, rotating tires, making sure your pressures are good. You don't always have to be necessarily on the ideal compound to get good results. In fact, it's very rare that you would always be on the ideal compound. It's, you know, it's, it's, there's too many variables involved. Learn to look after your tires. Learn about what compounds work and when. Have a good selection of tires. That's my top tip. So if we want to get into the specifics of like R5s and how those tires wear, well, it's not very different to most four wheel drive cars, to be honest. And four wheel drive cars, generally speaking, are quite kind to tires. It is an obvious byproduct that if you've got a four wheel drive system and the diffs are set up in such a way that you've got at least two wheels providing you with uh, drive and as a consequence traction, that you're not going to get the same rate of tire wear as you would um, in a two wheel drive vehicle. Of course, tyre wear is also very dependent on how you set the car up as well, so keeping on top of the geometry between events is very, very important. You know, I know there are plenty of people out there that don't touch the geometry between from foot to foot until, I don't know, once a season or if ever. But actually, you know, very minute variances do creep in and keeping a very good um, check on geometry after every event. I mean, really, the geometry should be done on your car every event. Um, and it doesn't have to be expensive. If you've had four wheel alignment done, then uh, you've got a reference point. So you've only got to get it put back to that each time, provided you haven't damaged the car in any way. Looking at this wet compound tire, you can see that it's directional and clearly removes the water from underneath the tire as it rotates and is in contact with the road. This is an extra soft compound. So it's the same compound as the extra soft cut slick, but you can see that the pattern is what enables it to cut through the water, any standing water, rather than aquaplaning on the surface. So if we take a look at this cut slick, as you can see, that's an absolutely brand new cut slick. And this outer groove, this is fairly narrow, not much to it. Now this is done about, I'd say, 20 stage miles, something like that. So as you can see, that groove there is pretty much gone. And you can just see just the general level of wear on the tire. So that sh the sharp edges on the grooves disappear. But that's still in good nick. So here we are. Here are our actual tires that I did the rally on at Abingdon. Um, and as you can see, yeah, they're pretty mullet. So up here, they're down to the wear stops. It's basically flat across there. But if you look at the actual rate of wear, it's pretty even. But certainly being smooth and not scrubbing out the front tires means that you know this this edge here has been you know reasonably well preserved. So then, there we are. I'm going to wrap the video up there. I hope that's been a bit of an insight into uh, how I approach my tire strategy. I hope you know what I've told you is good sort of advice and anybody that's been wondering about you know what they should do with tires I mean if you can if you can draw anything from my experiences then uh, that's great it's no great secret as far as I'm concerned I'm really pleased to have been able to answer the question um, left in the comments by several people asking about tires so don't forget to like and subscribe and to hit the bell icon so you get notified of when I upload a new video. So do keep your questions coming so I can uh, keep offering you the same insight into club and motorsport and running an R5. So until